Hello everyone, I am Senior Airman Phi and I work with Emergency Management. I will be doing your Base Emergency Preparedness Orientation, also known as BEPO. Today we'll be covering major accidents, hazardous materials, natural disasters, shelter locations, your ad hoc reporting system, and helpful websites and apps as well. Major accidents include multi-vehicle accidents along with aircraft accidents as well. They're not going to be your uh, normal fender benders that you'd see on the side of a road. These are going to be major, major accidents, right? In a situation like this, make sure that you gather information and report to BDOC, which is 722-1211. You also should shelter in place or evacuate the area upwind if possible. Perform first aid on victims as well. Make sure you warn others to evacuate the area, and hazards can be from fire, explosion, toxic substances, scattered debris, or secondary fire damage. When it comes to hazardous materials, you'll see hazmat placards on trucks, trains, or buildings that you work in. If there is a hazmat incident, make sure you notify authorities as soon as possible. Again, you're going to evacuate upwind of the area or shelter in place if evacuation is not feasible. When it comes to sheltering in place, there are several things that you should do. You should make sure you're turning off your HVAC systems most importantly, otherwise your heating or air conditioner will go ahead and bring all that contamination back into the building. Make sure you're shutting doors, make sure all the windows are closed, and that you're in the most center part of the building away from the walls. When it comes to an active shooter, make sure you're listening for the voice, amount, voice announcements called Lockdown, Lockdown, Lockdown. You should evacuate, barricade, or worst case scenario, you might have to fight. Our long-term shelter locations include lodging, Eagles Landing, the fit, and the fitness center here on base. Even if you live off base, you can come onto base to these shelter locations if you need to be at work and you think that you, your route to work might be compromised. When it comes to natural disasters, we have watches and we have warnings. Watches indicate conditions that are favorable for a particular weather event or near the watch area. Your warning indicates a particular weather event is imminent or occurring. We have a lot of hurricanes here in North Carolina. We've had two in the past three years, so they happen about every other year here. Um, hurricane season occurs from 1 June to 30 November. Shelters are activated in Hurricane Level 2. Hurricane Florence, the last one we had last year, produced 12 inches of rainfall. The roofs never reached a level of 26.8 feet. Your major flood stage here is 24 feet. So make sure you're prepared, have an emergency kit. Shelters will be provided to you and your family. And you should monitor um, the radio, commander's access channel, and giant voice information that you hear on base. Tornadoes in North Carolina don't happen very often. I have yet to experience one but they do happen. Uh, most activity occurs from late winter to spring. Can be single storms, but usually are associated with thunderstorms or hurricanes. Some common danger signs include dark, often greenish sky, large hail, a large dark low-lying cloud, loud roar similar to a freight train. Make sure you're placing heavy items on bottom shelves and you, you should get to the most bo uh, center part of your home. So the hallway, a door frame, in the bathroom, make sure you aren't near any windows. I know a lot of places here in North Carolina do not have a basement. So make sure you're getting to the most center part of your home. Lightning storms. We all hear lightning within five all the time here in North Carolina, so please make sure that you are going and seeking cover when you hear lightning within five. Avoid being at the highest object in the area. Do not seek cover under trees or metal. Don't be the person that plays on a playground. It's not the brightest idea. Um, over 300 people are struck by lightning each year, so this actually is a real threat, so make sure that when you hear lightning within five, you're taking those necessary precautions. We have hurricanes or a lot of rain here in North Carolina. We experience a lot of flooding due to the Noose River coming through our town. So make sure you evacuate to high ground when instructed to do so. If it's harder to recognize flood dangers during low, flood, um, low visibility conditions, do not drive through flood waters. It takes six inches of moving water to knock you off your feet and 18 inches of water to carry away a vehicle. If you don't know how deep a puddle is, find a different route to get to wherever you're trying to go. Do not drive through that water. We do experience extreme heat and humidity here in North Carolina. Temperatures can exceed 100 degrees in July and August. Make sure you're limiting your time outside. Wear loose fitting clothing that is light colored um, and you should also hydrate as well. We do have some winter weather here in North Carolina, so please be sure that you're driving with caution. Um, be wary of black ice. Temperatures can drop below 15 degrees here in the winter months. I've experienced a few ice storms myself, having to chip away at my car just to get in. Avoid cold-related injuries. Make sure you always dress appropriately for the weather. 
During ice and winter storms, make sure that you go ahead and keep some sand or some cat litter in the back of your car. In case you get stuck on the side of the road, you can place that underneath your tires to provide some traction to get you unstuck. There's possibility that there will be weather damage that you need to report to the base. You're going to call 722-5139, which is for CES customer service. If damages are seen off base, call, uh, call the local power company. Do not touch down powered lines. Um, they pose an inherent risk of electrocution. You do not know if they're still active or if they're still charged. When it comes to emergency kits, make sure you are prepared before dis disaster strikes. Make sure you have a first aid kit. You should have flashlights, candles, lanterns. Make sure you have non-perishable food and a can opener. You should have a gallon of water per person per day. So if you have a family of two people that needs to be um, within your house for let's say four days, you need to have eight gallons of water in your house. If you have a pet, you should allocate for a gallon of water for each individual pet per day as well. Uh, you should have portable entertainment such as board games and cards, especially if you have kids. You should have your vehicles fueled up ahead of time. If you're sheltering in place, fill up large bathtub or sink with water if you need to. You should seek shelter and make arrangements for pets ahead of time. As far as the ad hoc system goes, on the bottom right hand corner of your computer, you should see a tab where you can go ahead and access the purple globe. It's actually now white, it's no longer purple. But you're going to go in there and I need you to make sure that you are putting in your cell phone number. It is mandatory per AFI that your cell phone number is in the ad hoc system. So you should go into your profile, update that information, make sure it's good to go, so that way you're following the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have helpful websites where you can go ahead and reach more information on any of these natural disasters, hazmat incidents, or sheltering in place, or emergency kits that you may have. So please use these resources that we also have as well. Thank you for your time.